Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so fortunate she could be back with me. And I'm so fortunate to be back with y'all. I'm about to do it again. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Ah. Lord. Yeah. Ah. Lord. Fuck these bitch ass niggas Lord. for real. Lord. Yeah. Lord. Ralph. Lord. 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 Woo. All right. Live from New York City. Repping the skins hard today. As, as I've been the New York Giants. It's only right. Wale, DJ Clark Kent. Together again, full R and tape drop in Christmas Eve, yeah. December 24th. Amen. Um, the first thing I heard about this was from Ebro. He said, yo, you gotta hear your man's tape. The show's pretty crazy. Um, what was the, where did this, or actually, where did the relationship between these two start? Did y'all know about that? Like um, when, when he first got on some I'm gonna go rapping, um, Kenny Burns. Like my my brother, he introduced me to him, and I listened. That's all I had to do was listen. It's, it's his lines, the lines he said, the bars, um, instantly sparked me wanting to keep listening. But then we had so much in common besides just the rap thing, and he, he's like my little brother. It's my boy right here. Yeah. The rap, yeah. The sneakers, yeah. The um the love of hip hop, the the true understanding of hip hop. The um, sport. The sport. He understands the sport of hip hop. He's a true MC. Let's talk about the sport, the sport of it a little bit, because um, we had a conversation last week on the radio about the competition of it and uh, how or lack it, thereof, or lack thereof, right now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and um, but while that you're an interesting dude in that regard, and that you love the sport of it, but also you struggled early on with the um, not with the competition within the game. To me, you only struggled with the hate and bullshit you got from people outside the game. Yeah. Yeah. And it seemed like about a year ago, a year and a half, I saw you shed some of that. Tell me about sort of your evolution as far as dealing with criticism and Twitter and people writing about you. Take us through how it's been for you mentally. One of the things I always want people to understand is like, the only reason why I give a fuck is because I give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a lot of niggas, you know, like I'm not throwing no shots at nobody. I'm not telling them my business because I'm gonna keep all the names out of this. But there's a lot of people that I see. They get up in the morning. You know what I'm saying? They don't give a fuck about what their fans think. They don't give a fuck about what their managers think. I'm more so like a collaborative nigga. Like as far as like my fan, I can't. That's why I let them affect me. Like I, that's why I let them like. I, I'll listen to a fan that like an honest opinion that I don't like that while like, I want to know why because I feel like. My shit goes through four or five layers before niggas even hear it, whereas most niggas just say, whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of niggas drop the mixtape and just say whatever the fuck they wanted to for two hours. But like, I, my shit goes through one phase, second phase, third phase, fourth phase, sober phase, drunk phase, high phase, regular, like, and then 10 o'clock in the morning listening to the thing like that. You know what I'm saying? That's just how, I, like, I, it goes through so much. So I'm, I'm very, very, like, like, I feel a way if niggas don't like it because I already got it through so many levels and I care about my fans. Like this this tape is all for the fans. Well it's funny, you got a lot of a lot of heat because basically of being an artist. And it's something that's common in other fields, right? Like it's the great artists of other genres. We all know that they've been very sensitive about criticism. People care about it, especially you've had people who seemed like at times, you know, were on a mission to really not just critique your album, but take personal you know, attacks at you, and, and it um, it seemed like it was a tough thing for you. But what did you do to sort of at least shed wearing it on your sleeve? Because like, like I said, something changed, and you still care. I know about the fans, but you don't seem as um, I don't know. You don't seem as flustered, or something about your energy changed over the last year and a half. I mean, like I said, I care about the niggas that really care about it. So if you hate it and you really care about it, then I'm, I, like, I, I, I might want to know why. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, I, mean, I do this shit for the fans, like. The Polar mixtape was really a combination of every mixtape that I've ever had together. You know what I'm saying? Because the album, they might not be so lucky. Why? Why are you saying? I might do it for the album for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, like I, I, I you know, I'm like I. This is the second time I'm announcing it, but I'm doing a go go album after my album. And my, when I say go go, I don't mean like cheesy go go. It's gonna be sequence. It's gonna be me probably rapping only 40% on the album, but 
getting the sound out. Me and Trey gonna have a nigga like Gogo, Mickey, and Jill Scott in the studio and make it understandable. You know what I'm saying? Trying to revolutionize the game. So, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, I care what the people say, I care what the city say, I care what, what they want. You know what I'm saying? You Make are, it to a fault. You are an oddball mix, by the way. Now, I'm gonna tell you, Clark, I don't know, I know, you know Kenny, you know DC well. You don't meet a lot of people that are so split between their love of go-go and hip-hop. Like, they, they do exist, right. but usually people really went a certain direction, and they get a little frustrated, be like, if they want hip-hop, no, I'm not trying to hear go-go right now, I'm trying to hear hip-hop. Right. You really seem to embrace both equally. Do you lean more one way? Do you love Gogo as much musically or is it because of what it represents for DC? What it represents? Because Gogo evolved. It's not the same Gogo that I grew up on. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you know, you can talk to Big G, you can talk to Miss Kim, you can talk to uh, White Boy, you can talk to, uh, you know, whoever. From the Gogo community, they, they tell you the same thing. Like, it ain't what it used to be. It's almost, almost, almost a vintage sound right now. You know, which is unfortunate, but you know, you, you gotta give the, the you know the generation behind us uh, or or you know under them, but you gotta give the next next generation a chance to do what they want to do because Goku was a chance to do what they want to do, what Chuck and them want to do, what G wanted them to do, what Trey wanted them to do, you know, and right after that. So it's just like we we want to do you know how we want to do it. Um, what is Clark? What is the collaborative process between you two? So how does this actually work? Um, Probably unbeknownst to anybody, we talk so much about rap that it, it's not really that confusing. Um, it's show me what you want people to hear, and I'm going to make sure it sounds right when they hear it, and then I'm going to do the little nuances in between it to make so it what, what an actual those? mixtape. Take us through those nuances that you're, you're involved in. Um, interludes. Um, the way that the mixtape actually happens is actually going to be mixed. I'm actually a DJ. I'm not a guy with the name in front of him. You don't say. No, I'm just saying I that there's a bunch of them out there. Uh, there are. We'll stack records behind each other and say mixtape. I'm, I'm not the guy who's going to be screaming all Well, that's almost time. become the norm to do that. Yeah, but unfortunately, this is not normal. He's not normal. I'm not normal. I'm a true DJ. He's really a true MC who gives a damn about the craft. I give a damn about my craft. And when we give a damn as much as we do about our craft and we come together, it wouldn't make sense for me to just stack some records and say, I hosted a mixtape if I'm not actually DJing on the mixtape. So because he loves hip hop the way he does and the way I love hip hop and the fact that he loves the craft of actually being an MC and I love the craft of being a DJ, we wanted to actually give the whole picture. So the conversation we had about it was too simple, too easy. I just asked, am I allowed to DJ on it? And he's like, yeah, if you're allowed to DJ, then I can do my job. Because I'm not a mixtape DJ. Respectfully, and I pay respect to all the mixtape DJs, I, I don't have anything against them, but like, I'm an actual DJ who mixes, so if I do a mixtape, it's gonna be mixed. <clears throat> and he agreed, so it made sense. Plus, again, like, like he's my boy. And I, and I don't believe in that many MCs that I would say, yeah, I'll do a mixtape with you. You gotta understand, like, me as a, like a, D, like a in DC, like, I, I, I look at Slim like, nigga did Reasonable Doubt, like, he was one of the key components to making Reasonable Doubt a cohesive, like, project, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you, 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 you hear the shit, like, I remember when I was, we were talking about earlier, like, when I was in London, with Mark, I was like 21 years old. This nigga was just like, I, I met him, like, I was at the computer looking at my MySpace, and he was like, yo, what's up, like, you know what I'm saying? And he was just telling me about all the stories back then. That shit was making me sweat. Like, I was just like, damn, I felt like I was there. I felt like I was there with Biggie and Jay, son. I felt like I was really fucking there. The way he told me the story, I was like, and then after that, I just was like, yo, I was locked in with this nigga. Like, he, and, he, and he had been following me ever since then. He had been telling me, like, yo, yo you going, people going to get it soon, man. Like, trust me, I know, like, it's frustrating. Like, they're going to hear you soon. Quiet as cats. My personal opinion is that Clark Kent is the most uh, influential and current hip hop personality from his generation. Right. And I say that to say, cats don't even know that he's from that generation. Because yeah. that's how current yeah. and relevant yeah. as a tastemaker yeah. in the hip hop, in the gear, in the whole culture that you become. So, A, congratulations. That's an accomplishment. That's not easy. <laughs> I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know, cats fade out in this hip hop game. <laughs> Quite that's, that's why not, not, you, got, you got that mind. Like, this nigga, like, he here, he's, he's just as relevant as he's ever been. Like, ever. I would say, nigga, like, he got his own, the bronze, he got his own kicks. Like, 
Like a lot of that shit is gonna come to light. Like, like not, and one thing Clark had a lot to do with the, the graphic design for this tape too. You know what I'm saying? They called Future up and, and, and they went over like how they want to do the tape. Like this shit is hit. Like I I got Clark. Like I told him, I said almost 40 percent for the music, 60 other percent just for what he brings. Like for vision. Like he get it. Intangible. He get it. He get it. Where does I mean? This, oh, sorry. Speaking to what you said, the reason why people fade out is because they don't actually love what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? And they fall out of love with what they were doing. So, so say you got a DJ who you can't hear from anymore. He doesn't love being a DJ. You know what I'm saying? You got an MC who falls off. It's because he didn't love his craft anymore. It wasn't for him anymore. Right. Like this thing right here, like I <laughs> love music so much that I can't stop being a DJ on the level that I am. And we grew up wanting to be fresh. So why would I stop wanting to be fresh and all of a sudden? It doesn't help that you physically haven't aged much in the last I'm Panamanian, so I'm not gonna age. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I didn't know that was a Panamanian. <coughs> I thought it was just black girl crack. It's special. No, that's not even the black girl crack. That's not even black girl crack. That's just a Panamanian. Yeah, yeah. You you're double levels. Well, I'm lucky. Uh, and you don't stress. He's going down. No, he doesn't stress. I've never seen you I even. I believe one thing. If God gave me another day after everything that I've been through, I'm good. So what's the stress for? I'm alive. If I can breathe, I can change my world. I'm going to start stealing. I'm going to start stealing everything this guy does. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, he has the blueprint. <laughs> All right, so... Um, God bless that man with ambition For that man had a vision No 40 acres and no mule But I know my mood like extensive And no, I don't pursue friendship Solo, dolo, yellow, respected Check this